This picture frame was inspired by the art print Seven Sparrow Eye by Wowley, available on imprint.com. The frame and Kumiko details are constructed from hard maple and utilize an inset Kumiko lattice to complement the Japanese Seven Samurai theme. For this video, I'll be going over the process of creating the inner lattice decorative piece. Traditionally, Kumiko is done by hand, but in this video, I use a variety of modern tools to aid in the process. Starting at the bandsaw, previously dimensioned pieces are ripped down into strips for the Kumiko lattice. Since the Kumiko strips are so thin, a backer board is used when planing them down to their final dimensions. This could have easily been done by hand, but since I had a planer ready, it did the work for me. A finishing pass with a hand plane will still be done to get that final smooth surface and clean away the machining marks. The long strips are rough cut down to their final dimensions and a number of different lengths needed for this pattern. The saw leaves a fluffy coarse edge, which I'll clean up with a hand plane. With all the pieces cut, I can start laying out the pattern and seeing how it looks relative to the frame. And in this case, I decided to shorten a few of the center pieces to work with the white space of the artwork a bit better. Since this is such a small piece, I didn't work out how each piece's interlocking notches will be laid out ahead of time, and instead did it as I developed the pattern. I preferred notching out the tops and all the horizontal parts, so each time it intersects with a vertical one, it will create a visual break which I felt indeeded as the horizontal pieces echoed the long stretch of the frame, and it felt unbalanced. The parts, now plain smooth, just need a cleanup of these fluffy saw-cut ends to put them at their final dimensions. I'll clean up the end grain by squaring it off with a hand plane. This is the final step in dimensioning, so it'd be an unfortunate time to have some end grain blowout. Using a jig called a shooting board would be a perfect tool for the job, of course, that means I've already built one, which I haven't. So for now, to avoid edge breakout, two sacrificial pieces are placed to support the end fibers of the wood. Getting a piece this small square cut is tricky without a guide or large reference surface. It takes a few tries to set the piece right, so I can get a good perpendicular slice. Since I had a number of repetitive notch cuts to make, my first inclination was to mock up a quick jig, only to determine, after making a few cuts, my jig was out of square, which made a lot of crooked cuts. And the parts didn't interlock perfectly square, as they should have. Luckily, I caught this early enough, and decided to go for the cautious route, and swapped over to hand-cut notches. This means I need to now mark up my pieces, as I can't rely on the table saw, to handle the placement for me. A fine tooth pull saw makes quick work of the sidewall cuts for each of the notched sections. I start each cut using the tip of my finger on the saw's smooth surface to start the cut exactly where I want it. Now, with all the walls of the notches saw cut down, I can pop out these sections with a chisel and a little bit of pressure. During this process, I discovered that adding a smaller width chisel to my woodworking wish list would be a wise idea if I ever want to do any more lattice patterns. It was far too easy for the Y chisel to mar the walls. Any of the notches that were cut a hair too narrow were cleaned up with a chisel. A dry test fit session, that is without any glue, allowed me to find and refine those last few tiny adjustments needed to get a solid fit for all the lattice pieces to each other and to the frame. In this case, the fit was tight enough that no glue will be used for this assembly at all. Some very light, very careful sanding passes will smooth out the surfaces of the frame and the lattice. After this cleanup, the whole piece is treated with hemp oil, which I've grown fond of from previous projects due to its warm, soft finish and lack of harsher chemicals and strong odors. This is Sarah, the Friendly Westland Adult Services Librarian. I hope you have enjoyed this how-to tutorial. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel to be notified when new content is available. You can also follow us on Facebook or visit the library website to learn about upcoming programs that are not available on YouTube. 
As always, thank you for watching.